Hey everyone, now the last few days, me, Asia, as well as my roommate BJ and friend Amber have been going on a Halloween hunt. I really like Halloween, but I'm not often or easily scared. So one of the things I thought would be really fun to do is challenge myself to find the best and scariest like haunted houses in Sacramento. We decided on Dire World, Scandia's Woodsmaker, and Cemeterium. Dire World in Roseville, which is a suburb of Sacramento. They have this like kind of theme park where they have multiple different activities that you can engage in for different prices. So we paid for a fast pass into each house more than once. It's like a little bit disappointing to pay $20. We were a group of three. We did everything except for one activity and we paid about $76, which I think is a little expensive for how we felt at the end of the evening. I think that the props and the set were high quality. I think that the actors were pretty good. They had a lot of variants. They were quite diverse actually. And I think that they tried very hard to provide you with a total experience. However, I just couldn't get into it. There were four houses that we went to, Asylum, Dark Realm, Malice, and Death Sentence. They're all included in the price, but you can only go into each house once. So Asylum is obviously an insane asylum. That house is lacking. I didn't think there was a lot going on in there. It was just stereotypical crazy people in white dresses being crazy. <laughs> There was Malice, which was Alice in Wonderland theme house. That one actually I thought was pretty good. That one was 3D, psychedelic, acid trip-like experience. You're walking around with these glasses right here, which they provide for you. And it's kind of hard to see and figure out like where you're going. There was lots of bright colors. So if you have any like light sensitivities or anything like that, I would definitely recommend you stay out of this house. But there wasn't a lot of scary things going on. There were a few things that like popped out, but mostly you were walking around and kind of like looking at things and it would be those kinds of those holographic things where if you like change your direction the image changes it was kind of long like I felt like there was like a pretty long path to navigate through and so I kind of felt like I got a lot of bang for my buck in that house even though I wasn't necessarily scared but it was the first house that we went into so there is something to say about that one being the first because we didn't know what to expect. So I think there was a lot of suspense, not knowing if something crazy was gonna like pop out and scare the shit out of you. So the next one we went to was Dark Realm and honestly, I don't remember much about that one. Obviously it didn't leave an impression on me. Okay, moving on, Death Sentence. So Death Sentence, that one was interesting. It wasn't really a haunted house. It was more of an activity, if you will. We went in in a group of 20. We were sat into this room, which was basically a viewing for a death sentence. So there was a prisoner who had committed like multiple crimes and he was gonna be executed and we were gonna be the witnesses. The lights go out for like one second and he was gone. Then there was like another pop of light and he was like all the way across the room. And it was a pretty long room, maybe like 30 feet long. This guy was super fast. He was like the fucking flash or something. And they did tell us that we would be touched like on the legs or something. And there would be these little like sensory stimulation like on our legs that was supposed to simulate electricity. So overall it was okay. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. Um, I definitely think that if I was going with someone, I would recommend them go to this one over Asylum. There were two other houses that we paid for that were part of VIP. So it was kind of like a hybrid between a haunted house and an escape room. Those two haunted houses were an additional $20 to participate in. One was completely whack. Um, that was the one where basically there was like a mad scientist trying to put back together his like dead daughter or something. That one, there's not much to say about it. The actor in the very beginning who tells you the rules, tells you the theme, walks you upstairs, like she was really good. I actually really liked her. Hi, how do you do? I'm Governor's Hat. Are you going to be with us and throughout the entire No, I'm like really scared. I have a heart problem. You do? Yes. Oh, good. I'm an EMT. I'll help. <laughs> <laughs> The one that I really liked of the VIP situation was the military quarantine. That one was hands down of what they offered, the spookiest. We had to wait a long time for that one to be, like get set up and only a few people can be in it at a time. There was different things going on. You had to sign a waiver to get into that room specifically because you were gonna be sprayed with stuff. You had to touch things people were gonna to touch you, and that one was quite shocking. I wouldn't go so far as to say that I was scared because I don't scare easily when it comes to these things, but this one did a lot better at engaging all the different senses. BJ was totally scared, she was like losing her shit. That one I think was easily the best value out of the two. 
Hey guys, I want to tell you to check out my newest video on my vlog channel, Please Excuse My Brilliance. I post new videos once a week on Fridays. We experience a lot of cool shiz, which I can't wait to share with you. So be sure to subscribe to this channel, ring the bell for notifications, and pop on over to Please Excuse My Brilliance. And don't forget to rinse and repeat. Catch you on the flip side. So one of the things that was really cool about Dire World is that they use a lot of technology to really sell the experience that they wanted each participant to walk away with. So Amber had a friend who was working there. He got us basic entry into the park. And what was really cool about what he was doing is he's a guitarist in a local band. He would play these like really creepy chords on his guitar and it would echo out throughout the park because they had a really, a pretty kick in um, stereo setup. Like no matter where you were in the park, you could hear uh, the music and the guitar strums and the screams that they pre-recorded or whatever all around. I actually really liked that. Uh, something else that I really liked was that they had stage performance. So they actually had a stage in the middle of the park where there was fire dancers and they were pretty good. One of the things about Dire World though is that it's kind of hard to get to. You like drive forever through like a neighborhood that is pretty well decorated. I think because the people in that neighborhood know Dire World is right in their backyard, they decorated their neighborhood to be quite festive. So as you're driving through, you're looking at all the houses and all the decorations and stuff like that. So that was kind of cool. So would I recommend Dire World for anyone who's visiting Sacramento looking for something to do on Halloween? Yes, I would. What's going into that is the cost. Like I said, to do everything is gonna cost you just under $100. Plus there's a the cost of food. Parking was $5. And despite the fact that the props and the technology was there. I do think that the execution of the themes in each house just needed a little bit more oomph. It, something was lacking, but I definitely give them props and credit for trying. Definitely much better experience than other places I've been. We went to Scandia's Wuss Maker, and if you've ever been to SAC, then you know what Scandia is. It's like your junior high, high school, date night, mini golf place. They also do batting cages, they have an arcade. It's just like a cute little like fun center, but it's definitely like geared towards like kids. But you know, there are definitely, there were adults in the house, and especially for Halloween when they turned part of their little park into a haunted house. One of the things I noticed from year to year was that each haunted house that I've been to had a policy on touching. Well, all of the haunted houses said you couldn't touch their actors, but most of them said that they wouldn't touch you in return. However, at Scandia's um, Wussmaker, they actually did touch you and you had to consent to that in advance. So one of the things they had you do was like, look up at a camera, give a thumbs up that you agreed to the rules, which we did. And they told us like, you know, where they would be touching us, there was nothing that was inappropriate. They were touching us like beneath the, the knees, like, and I think mostly that kind of stuff was to let you know that you needed to like move along or to kind of give you cues as to where you were supposed to be walking. They were very gentle touches, but they were like kind of like wispy and um, a little bit like, you know, spooky. I think that it added to the overall experience because one of the things that I struggle with is suspending disbelief. How many of my senses are being engaged at a single time? When enough of my senses get engaged, I feel as though I'm actually in this world and I'm able to like forget about the wait in line, how cold it is, did we pay for parking? You know, all that stuff goes like right out the window because you're thinking like in the here and now and in the here and now, some shit's going on right in front of you that's like blowing your mind or at least it should be. So one of the things that I really liked about um, Scandia was that they didn't just um, let you walk in with your own party. You had to break your party down into groups of two. I went with three people, which meant that one person had to go by themselves. That ended up being VJ and she decided not to participate because she was scared. They made a wuss out of her. But Asia and I, we went through the haunted house and um, it was quite narrow. So I can understand why they would only have two people go at a time, but it was jam packed full of activity. So one of the things I really liked about Scandia Wussmaker was that the costumes were really good. People were dressed in doll outfits, clown costumes, head to toe black suit, like monsters and bad guys from movies we all know and love. And some other ones that I can't even like think about off the top of my head. Um, there were quite a few actors that were like walking around the park and you could kind of engage with them while you're like waiting in line for food or whatever. I didn't get any pictures or any like audio clips or anything of the screams or the people walking around. I wish I would have gotten some of that stuff, but despite the fact that we didn't walk away with any like media content from that night, I do want to say that 
I vividly remember the overall experience and I think that's saying something because the other places that I've gone to, they've not left a lasting impression that would be something, in my opinion, worth sharing with others. Because we made it through Scandia Wussmaker Haunted House, Asia and I got a pin and it says no wuss here. And then BJ, she didn't go through, so she got a pin as well, but it said that she was wuss number 395. She will forever go down in Scandia history. I would say hands down thus far, that's the best haunted house that I've been to in the Sacramento area. For $15 off the charts, I have to, you know, I have to really say that they put a lot of effort into it. And I think that they have the right combination of atmosphere, props, actor quality, overall like suspense and surprise. I think they really tried to like titillate all the senses and really kind of get you to disengage with the real world and kind of get lost in the world that they were creating for you. It's non-refundable, so one of the things you need to know is that you can only go two at a time, so if you're in an odd party and like that last person who's gotta be by themselves is not okay with going by themselves, then someone is gonna have to buy another ticket to get in or they're gonna have to go by themselves or they're gonna end up wasting their money because they don't give refunds and they won't exchange the value of the um, wristband. I do think that's something they should have made clearer before purchasing. That would be my only feedback because that part felt slightly like a money grab. They tell you the rules after the fact and then if you don't agree to the rules, you just lot lose your money. It's definitely worth checking out. So if you can like kind of like tell from my mannerisms and like how excited I am to talk about this place. And it was super surprising coming from a place like Scandia. I mean, I think you're really apt to like sleep on Scandia because it's like family fun center. There's batting cages and a little arcade. And I mean, like it's no grandiose um, amusement park, but it's our local thing. And I think because of that, it's easy for us to forget and not think that it can bring anything to the table but they actually did a really good job, so I really wanna give them props. All right guys, thanks for watching. Check back every week for new video reviews, tips, and tricks. Don't forget to subscribe and ring my bell to be notified of new videos. Also, make sure you massage that like button. Drop a comment below letting me know, do you get scared of haunted houses? Which places would you recommend I visit? All right, thanks for watching. Have a good one, we'll see you next time. Let's do everything but that last part again and look into the camera, but that, that last thing you just did was really good. some shit.